um, Father James was in New Orleans, like I want to say like three or four months. This is the priest that baptized me. It was in the New Orleans, like three or four months before Katrina. Mm. And he got this phone call and he was like, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I can't hear you because it was busy on the sidewalk and like stepped inside like an antique store and turned around. There's like this icon of St. Nicholas, just like right there, like this like really Whoa. old icon of St. Nicholas. And it was like a couple thousand dollars or something like that. And he was like in his spiritual father, basically like got in contact with him. He's like, you need to go buy that now because it's not going to be there in a couple months. Whoa. Like you like need to go get it like right now. So this is Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And if tomorrow either pizza or tacos were to be no more, which one would you pick? Like pizza would never exist. Tacos never exist. Taken off the face of the earth. Everyone, would, The knowledge would be taken away of how to create either item never to be given again. Uh, this is this is really going to this is really going to pain. Uh, I know my answer. It's really going to pain my whole Mexican lineage right here. Like, it's so sorry. Oh. <laughs> pizza's pizza's got to stay. Pizza's Interesting. Stay. <laughs> I thought we would all be tacos because I'm tacos. Pizza's, pizza's got to stay. Pizza's got to stay. I'll take tacos over pizza any day of the week. Yep. I, I, yeah. I would say tacos too, you know. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's like I, I was struggling with that. It's like, ah, oh, you know, pizza. It's like I had a great piece of pizza last night. It's like pizza, but I've never said no to a taco. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. I've said no to pizza before. Oh my gosh. Mm. I've said no to pizza, but man, I've been on I've been on a hard shell taco kick lately. It's so good. I just you had them last night. We I made them for made shredded chicken tacos for the kids last night. Shredded chicken tacos. <laughs> It's so yeah, good. Tacos, man. I mean, even I like saying taco more than I like saying pizza. <laughs> I would say here's, here, I guess this is my only thing. Like, and, and again, it's difficult because I've had some great times around tacos, no doubt, especially going down, visiting family, going down into yeah, those liquid tacos we had. Oh, ooh, at, oh at your here? wedding celebration. Incredible. Languid tacos, the best languid tacos I've ever had. Mm. Yeah, we've got a great we've got a great Mexican uh, cook here on the island. But ever, this is what I will say: ever, ever, if they're, they, they, that lengua is they were the best lengua tacos I've ever had. Okay, that's it. and you saw how fast it went. He had a whole thing of lengua that was gone, like gone. 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 Here's what I will say though: pizza. I've had so many good times where pizza has been involved. <laughs> especially growing up, you know, like youth sports and stuff. Oh, let's go get pizza yeah. after the big win and everything and the arcades and the whole, there's a thing with pizza. It's a more social food without a doubt. There's Taco a bar, you got to kind of wait. People are getting the different fixings. The lettuce is getting in the sour cream and the tomatoes and the cheese without a doubt. Yeah. You know, but I still pick tacos every time. Not we got 20 lingo. minutes of hot dog talk last, last week. Let's it's see. A hard, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard choice, but okay. All right. See if we can go for I'm 25 done. minutes of tea. So, okay. <laughs> like, without a doubt, Home Alone, right? The movie Home Alone. Show yes. up with pizza. You show up with pizza. Like, a tacos in that situation, like, forget about it. It's like, right. what is he supposed to get mad at Butch about? You know, like, because, like, you know, Butch, like, spits at the pizza. It's like, it's a completely different feel to it. Pizza is like the great equalizer. Mm-hmm. One guy I know was like, Pizza is still the best kind of party that's sober. Like my jaded, he was like, I my, my jaded over 25 year old heart still gets excited at a pizza party. And like, even if like, 
you know, it's the middle of the day and I have to go back to work afterwards. Like I'm still excited about a pizza party. I don't necessarily feel the same way about tacos, but without a doubt, tacos have got to stay pizza. I mean, like father said, I've turned down pizza. I'll, I'll turn down pizza again in my life. I very rarely turn down a taco, if ever. But, if you know, ever. there are some New Yorkers right now and some Chicagoans who are like, they probably smashed whatever device they're like watching <laughs> right now, hearing you guys say tacos. How are those stage? pizzas like, so different from each other? Those pizzas are so different as far as spectrum. Well, Chicago pizza pizzas, is basically though. a cake. Yeah. It's basically, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a meat and cheese cake. Base. Well, I guess it's a pie. It's a I would say it's a pie. pie. It's, it's a, a pie. deep pie. Yeah. That's like, I can't even think about eating a Chicago style pizza and like doing anything afterwards. Like oh, that's no, no, no. the you're rest done. of my day. Like, yeah, you're done. I, I don't, I'm not. And see, that's another thing is like, I can eat a taco for lunch and be cool. Pizza for lunch. Forget about it. That's the rest of my day. Like, it's just so heavy. It's so hard. So I think Cyprian is frozen. Oh, there he no, is. I okay. Should, I should be back. Yeah. I'm yeah. Back. Um, all right. Well, we got four minutes. That's one fifth of what I wanted to do. Unless. Yeah, that's all I got. I don't want to do any more <laughs> of that. But. Um, oh, so, wait, have... so where are we in? So where are we in the Creed before right we now? do that? I'm okay. going to I'm going to say this now because if I don't say it I'm going to forget and kick myself. Okay. For whoever cares, I was bored a couple of days ago and I made a Royal Path oh, music yeah. playlist on Spotify. So it should be Royal Path podcast music or something like that. I'm going to I'm going to put it in the uh, description of the video. It's not everything. I tried to go I tried very limitedly to go back and take uh, either artists that we've mentioned that we like or specific songs that we like. And then I took a couple like uh, of the, the like big ones, the, the club bangers of the artists that we mentioned, like from like Sabbath, I put like paranoid and iron man and like war pigs and stuff like that. And then I put cakes cover of war pigs and said, father, did you listen to it? Did you listen to cake version of war pigs? Uh, no, but I've heard it. But oh, you have? Oh, yeah. I thought you had. My fault. My fault. But anyway, so that's up, and then we'll put a link or whatever to it. So I just wanted to mention that before we um before we got rolling. So anyway, yeah, yeah, it'll be in the description. I'll put it. I'll put a link. I'll put a link. Thank you. And if you guys um if I missed anything, you just let me know. I'll put it okay. on there. It's Andrew Heavy right now. It's Andrew's, it's Andrew's favorite music. I've been listening to it a lot myself because it's just a bunch of the music I like. So, I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't I listen to it? But, um, and Father, I put Stone Temple Pilots, that Stone Temple, <laughs> Temple Pilots song from Crow, from the Crow on there. So that's for you. Um, okay, so uh, suffered and was buried. And on the third day rose again, according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. So I have no honest preference about what we should talk about tonight. Usually I have like a little bit of an opinion, but. Well, uh, I, I have something as I was thinking about this, because yeah. there's and father, maybe you, maybe you could speak to this. I mean, I understand that as we get through down through the creed, there is the church. And I, I know that we'll probably end up spending a lot of time on uh, talking about the church, mm -hmm. but. I feel like as this story is being told, and I'm sure that it's left out on, on purpose, I, it's like, so suffered and, and was buried, rose again according to the scriptures on the third day, and ascended into heaven, but there's, the, but there's a gap of time. Like, Pentecost is not really mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's that that was interesting to me as I was thinking about like, well, what are we going to do today? And I was like, whoa, there's kind of like a, a this big thing here mm -hmm. that seems like that would be pretty important. Wouldn't Pentecost be the next part then? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's interesting because when we get into the Holy Spirit. Even though it's not explicit about Pentecost, it's like 
Then we get into the Holy Spirit. We'll get into uh, one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Um, I, I definitely think you can't go there without, you know, kind of addressing Pentecost, the birth of the church institution, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, a little bit of a gap there. But I, I think the thing is to kind of get back to some of the more formal aspect of the creed, we are addressing the Trinity, right? Mm. I mean, the dogma. So, like, we've tackled the Father. Christ, obviously, is the most, you know, kind of exhaustive of the persons in the creed, you know? Mm. Um, and so, we, we are the economy of God, salvation. Uh, and primarily through the sun. And, and I think, you know, looking at how in depth the creed goes into all the person and deity of Jesus Christ. Um, and, and always remember, right. Always remember, because one of the great things about our format here is that we use the creed to really kind of springboard into other things, but we are talking about the creed. And so there, there's a historical dogmatic and doctrinal, I mean, it's fundamentally dogmatic, doctrinal, and historical. And, if, and it's addressing the, the persons of the, the Trinity, the life of the church. It's everything that you need to know about reality is summed up in the creed. If you know the creed, you're good to go. And so um, this portion here in regards of, you know, always, well, let me step back and say, we should always remember too that the portions of the creed are, are addressing certain problems as well, you know, mm. and like what we're talking about the, according to the scriptures and, and everything, when we talked about that, I mean, that is so much of that is to refute any type of heresy that would say that Christ wasn't truly incarnate, modalism, sabalism, any of these things like, well, you know, it's like, he was really just God the whole time, like the father, but taking on different modes, you know, mm. water, mm. ice, you know, liquid, ice paper, like all those problems, this is this is part of what's being addressed in, in the creed, all of these erroneous approaches to who God is. So just to kind of keep that intention and keep that in the background of the actual layout of the creed. So before we get into that, Father, I had a question that struck me earlier. The prayer of finding lost things, you're supposed to say the creed. Why is that? Like, like I'm, a, I'm personally not familiar with that tradition. Um, although I'm, I'm really familiar with speaking to, uh, asking Saint Theophil for intercession. I mean, he's our, he's the patron of our house, and he delivers. So he, he's Saint really Theophil? good. He's okay. Really, I mean, you know, if you don't want to stop smoking, don't ever pray to him because he will help someone quit smoking. <laughs> really? I, I'm, yeah. And, and finding things. I could tell you stories. Snakes being lost for months at a time. Computers falling off the roof of a car being found on the side of a freeway. Whoa. I mean, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, keys, keys disappearing, not finding the keys, anxiety setting on people, and then stepping outside and the keys being right in the middle of the sidewalk. Like, just so wow. many fun little things, you know, St. the Awful, lost things. So, yeah. And, you know, um, the other thing is the, you don't have to bake him a cake. You know, I mean, he's just takes a couple prostrations. So it's really good. <laughs> That's legit. That's legit. Okay. So, sorry. I, I wanted to, because that struck, I saw there was some Orthodox quote of the day or something the other day that was saying. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm sure it's there. I, I. I know nothing. I know barely anything. So that's probably tradition that I just, I don't know. Although I will say this, I'll say this, which a lot of people aren't aware of, but the creed is a little mini exorcism. Mm -hmm. So if someone's struggling with thoughts of um, uh, atheism, uh, which are inherently demonic, um, you know, I mean, if you're a believer, especially if you've been baptized and chrismated and you're struggling with thoughts of atheism, that's not from you. It's of the evil one saying the creed is like a little mini exorcism. You know, you can say that to reinforce the grace that you've received through the sacraments and you can say it to wash your mind and to really repel those assaults. So that I can't say enough about the creed in that sense. It's powerful. We've been having a fair amount of catechumens being made right now to the point where I, a layman whose attendance is spotty at best is like starting to memorize the catechumen prayers. 
mm. we say the creed three times i mean it's got to be kind of important like yeah. Yeah. so anywho um so the ascent I, so I, I, are we on the ascension then is that should that be where we are jumping off point for today i leave that to me? i mean listen either for you <laughs> i was gonna be one of those round where either for you guys i mean yeah, you kind of throw me the softball and I try to hit it <laughs> as best as I can, so, you know. Here's um, something. I got something. Father, during the catechism, you had talked a couple weeks ago about how. Um, okay, so I'm going to try not to bo like butcher this. But when you talked about that in the four different gospel accounts, and bear with me because I have a point here. In the four different gospel accounts, uh, especially at the Theophany, uh, one of the gospel, uh, I think, I think you said it was Matthew, that it was a voice rumbled rather than like a voice spoke or something like that. Meaning they heard that, it like, as thunder. They heard it as thunder. Okay. So then you had also talked about that in that same class that when Christ ascended, some people would not have even seen like Christ physically like go up, like the apostles, like going up and looking up, like if a random whoever was standing far away. From, and I don't remember the name of the hill or the mountain it was on, um, that suddenly there was, you know, five people there and suddenly there were four. Like they wouldn't have seen one person like go up. That, um, that you know, we experience God as much as we can bear him. Mm -hmm. So like the ascension there to that point, you know, like being able to like actually stand there and see him go up and then the nature of like what that means as far as like Christ in the flesh is now sitting at the right hand of the father. Mm -hmm. And like Father James, my old priest used to say, like, we'll be able to go up and like put our finger our fingers through the holes in his hands like he's still the way he was mm -hmm. when he left earth or when he, you know, went to heaven, not left earth, but went to heaven. So like, Maybe that's something. Yeah, I, I think I think it's important though to say that like uh, his his body is um, it's transfigured now though. Like this is this is the thing. Like in in uh, the gospel accounts, post resurrection, you know he can eat honeycomb and fish, but he's walking through walls, right? Sure. Um, the saints, right? The saints are able to interact with people when they appear to them, but they're able to at the same time, you know, by locate and do all these all these amazing to us amazing things, right? So, so the problem is is really that we we can maybe even get into like what is the the nature of of the res of a resurrected body? What's what's the nature of a of a body that has been entered into theosis maybe that's yeah I mean, there that's, it is that's that's the spot to go to. there it you is know, i mean this is one of the things in regards of um it's tough because i know for some people they just they, they scratch their heads at it but i think we don't present to people enough the reality of you know the saints the appearance of the saints the miracles of the saints even the saints working through icons and through relics. I mean, when you get in, when you get in the in the um, proximity of a holy relic, that's that's a foretaste of the resurrection, because the life of God is coming through that that fragment of bone or whatever you know. Um, sometimes a fragment of cloth that was next to the body, you know, a secondary relic. It, I mean the grace of God can is, is so powerful and can move in such mysterious ways. But um, yeah, the, the reality of what we will be, um, what we will become, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. I mean, it's going to be tough because, you know, I've never personally encountered, you know, I haven't had a saint come to me yet in a way that I'm like, they might've come to me imperceptibly in regards of a, of a physical visitation, but um, I've I've had the blessing of venerating many miracle working icons. I've had the blessing of venerating many, many uh, myrrh exuding miracle working relics. So in that sense, I've been, you know, uh, 
in proximity with 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 the holy with uh with the resurrected in that sense but um you know we can talk about the lives of the saints at this point and and, and look at that because i think <clears throat> i think this is an interesting thing for us because if it, it gets kind of scary because it starts it, it starts it starts speaking to people about this reality of a um, responsibility that i think especially if you are an evangelical and you'd come out of this idea that like, oh, the body doesn't matter. It's almost like the body's trash. Um, and the body isn't trash. Um, the body is a, a, a beautiful, you know, sacred thing. And um, in the reality that God works through and transfigures, you know, um, the human body is incredible. And on top of that, um, you know, there's, <laughs> um, there's this word from St. Simeon. I, I was talking about it in um, catechism a couple of weeks ago. Um, I would need to pull it up, but I mean, it, it's pretty incredible because he, um, well, I can't have, we can't both of us on the phone, but maybe if someone takes over, I can pull this up because this, I, this, I think this would be really pertinent. Um, to to talk about this because it, it's saint simeon let me see if i can find it oh father i can look it up i was looking up something else but or i've got i've got the i've got the quick fingers over here if you want <laughs> yeah i don't know if you guys would find it i mean it's it's saint simeon talking about um the body um christ in the body and there's a portion here it's like i i hate to uh, misquote it because it's a pretty brutal quote um but oh man um but he <laughs> i was told when i go there um father i can i can vamp for a second if you want because i have a story about a saint appearing to someone oh there Wonderful. you go not that i know but i can't remember but there was some bishop or something like that that was visiting uh iconographer who was depicting saint nicholas in the same icon as like the mother of god and christ and um he the bishop was telling basically like this iconographer this monk like oh no 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 no, you can't do that it's it's a heresy he's not he's not to be at the same level as christ and the mother of god he can't be in this icon the same way so the monk's like okay obedience that's fine okay that's not a big deal uh, and so this was on an island and on the way back, the bishop was on a ship and got washed overboard during the storm and the bishop was drowning and basically St. Nicholas appeared to him and like, you know, it was just kind of like hanging out, like looking at him and the guy, the bishop was like, St. Nicholas, please help me. He's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. Like, I'm just kind of, you know, this lowly little <laughs> person. I don't know if I can get in there and help you. I'm just St. Nicholas, you know. I don't know if I, and so the Bishop repented and St. Nicholas saved him. And of course, like went back to the Island and told him, I was like, you could put him on this icon. That's, that's fine. You know, it's not a big deal, but um, I love it. yeah, I love it. I like the idea of saints coming back and talking smack to us. Like, I think that's really, really cool because I think certainly in Western theology, we get this idea of like these like cherubic little people coming down with like angel wings and stuff and being like, mm -hmm all perfect and fun and stuff like that but no i like the idea of them coming back and talking smack especially saint nicholas who i really like saint nicholas but you need to keep going yeah, father yeah i'm almost there okay cyprian I, I've, I've been reading um saint paisios the the spiritual council that i've been reading and it is very interesting just as you say to where you would think oh these like obviously like so selfless like all the people that he helped and everything and yet he's he's like you know sometimes i just don't even want to answer the door like people are outside <laughs> and they're like he's like i just yeah. i just want to sit here i just want to sit and, and and pray sometimes you know and i just i think oh wouldn't it be wonderful and then they're outside like elder elder please please stop praying it's fine like god it'll be fine and he's like oh okay my wife has <laughs> okay. a lot of my wife has a love for St. Paisios, and one of the stories that she told that I really like, I'm glad you bring him up because he's 
he's someone that my wife is really really mm. is a big fan of and um he was sitting there and he was praying one night and like you know his hut his uh cell started shaking and you know like stuff started flying around and obviously he was under attack and he kind of like looked up from his prayer book i don't know exactly how around but this is how i imagine he's like really is this the way it's going to be tonight guys like really I was like, all right fine fine let's go let's go all right cool and then like just like started reading even like harder and just like oh yeah you know that's kind of one of those and the last one i'll talk about because i don't want to just keep telling stories is like he was in the desert i think and he was in a desert or uh, um it was not well lit and it was late at night and um he was having a hard time getting back to his cell and this mm. light shone down kind of like guiding his way and he was like okay all right and he like was walking along and then he kind of started like through discernment kind of figured out something was weird about the light he's like okay cool i'm good thank you shut it off i don't need your light i'm done because like he figured out it was like demonic mm -hmm. he was like he's like i don't need your help i don't need your help i'm good thank you and he just kind of kept on walking but the I'm fortunate because my wife is reading like this in-depth book on him right now. So, mm. I mean, I have so much reading that I need to be doing, but I'm not doing. But so now I get like these little excerpts of like St. Paisios because like, I don't know. He's just one of those guys that every time I hear, you know, you get those saints that sometimes like, like St. Macarius, like I like in St. Ignatius, I feel the same way about St. Ignatius. Like, love them respect for them but i'm like intimidated by them like mm. you know like i'm very much like you're the you're the teacher in school that like i'm always a little bit afraid to, it's a good class but i'm always a little bit afraid to go to your class like i'm always a little bit like hesitant to go approach you because you're so so far ahead of me there's like this great like i don't even necessarily feel that way about saint anthony the great like saint anthony's still like you know there's like this warmness there there's warmness to all of them but there's like a certain type of warmness to those saints and uh saint Paisios is the one of those guys that every time i hear him it's just like warm it's just like this like loving warm it's just like okay cool like he's that like teacher that you go to and it's like it'll be fun you know in his class it'll be stern he doesn't allow mm -hmm. like a lot of goofing off but you know he's cool so mm -hmm. father okay. i'm running out of material Got it? No, that's, good. <laughs> that's good so this is this is saint simeon um and his he has um um several hymns the divine arrows and um this portion here could be, you know, I guess scandalous for people, but uh, I think he says, I <clears throat> so he's, he's speaking about um, the love that God bestows upon, upon man, the experience of God, because St. Simeon was emphatic on our being a, on our, the necessity of us being able to have some sort of taste and experience of, of God in the here and now. So um, he goes on to say, he goes to say, um, we were made members of Christ and Christ become our members. And so thus you will know that both my finger and my penis are Christ. Do you tremble or feel ashamed? But God was not ashamed to become like you, yet you are ashamed to become like him. Love put to fight a calm of demons and chased away cowardice and introduced manliness. So I bring that up, because not and by no means, God forbid, for the sensational aspect of it, but you know, there is this um, puritanism that is latent for a lot of us where we don't realize the the kind of all-encompassing aspect of, of the work of Christ and, and bestowing upon those who, you know, are willing to be purified. Deification, which is, is the whole of the body, you know, and I think that this is important to understand because we get into these very, um, in, in, the, in all the wrong ways, a dualistic sense of, you know, diagnostic, body bad, spirit good, you know, even though we know that that isn't the quote unquote orthodox perspective, de facto, we live that out. And that quote is, is really important because I think 
number one, most people don't think of their penis or or any you know um, genitalia as as having the potential to be holy, mm. and that's that's problematic. And the ascension fundamentally, you know, kind of should be pointing to us uh, in, in the proper way, which is unfortunately the opposite way of how most of us are thinking about the body, you know, excuse me. Um, Cause Christ was it, naked on the cross, right? Yeah. I mean, he was naked on the cross. We don't depict him as such, but he was, you know, um, the shame that's there. And, and I think that there's, there's a, there's, a in embracing the shame of Christ's nakedness and Christ, the, just the shame that Christ endured, right? We, our shame is, is undone and we're able to approach humility and humiliation and we're able to um, really the effects of the fall are, are not necessarily undone, but they're transfigured, you know, like the shame that Adam and, and Eve felt in regards to them being coming aware of their nakedness, right? I mean, spiritually, we understand this, but also too, I think that, you know, it's wrong to put a, it's wrong to put a, a dichotomy between the shame that we inherently feel when we are naked, literally in front of someone, and to say that, you know, that isn't a correlation um, to the, the shame we can feel spiritually and, and emotionally, you know? Um, what I'm trying to get at here is we do better by looking to remove those dichotomies uh, between like the body uh, in a healthy way and, and, and the rest of our kind of spiritual life. You know, we, we relegate the body to the corner over here. And I think that it's important to, to recognize. Um, what does that look like? father like relegating well, the body i mean i was just gonna say i mean even some i think people have the wrong idea about asceticism you know the ascetics who their bodies withered under their asceticism and they they're not gnostics they don't have a hatred for the body right but it's, it's an understanding of leaving you know leaving the good for leaving leaving off what is, you know, good for what is, you know, true, if, if I could, if I could put it that way, because the goodness of the body is one thing, but we, we come into the holiness, the true aspect of God's love through the body, through asceticism, and it, and that isn't, that isn't because the body is bad, but rather the greater thing of the love of God, the greater thing of the presence of God needs to have any, any, any idol removed, right? And so the ascetics, a true orthodox ascetic knows that their body is gonna be resurrected. So when the, when the ascetic is, body is withering, it's not out of a hatred for the body, but, but rather it's out of absolute feverish desire for the, for the other world and for the resurrected experience, you know? Um, I mean, St. Mary of Egypt, right? She, her body was withered. She looked like a wraith, but yeah, she's able to walk on water. What do you, you know? Um, well, the this is this is interesting because as as usual, like it seems to be tying. There's all these subtleties, right? And it like it ties back into a lot of the things that are going on right now and that have occurred and the changes that have occurred and this idea again. It's like cover up i was i started talking last year that i said watch 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 there's going to be this thing where people are going to start talking about ah oh, she walked in here with her naked face right because she wasn't wearing a mask mm. right and this it is this turning turning the body and i think it goes to like saint mary of egypt you know like of course when someone is when someone's there out of a sense of modesty you know, it's, it's to say, oh, I'm naked, so there's a sense of modesty. But in her asceticism, in the world, it's it, like there in the desert, she wasn't, like she, she wasn't about her own body. It wasn't about looking in the mirror. It wasn't about, you know, no. let me get and the even, best angle on the selfie. Right, right, right. And even, and even when Zosima comes to her, she's like, Father Zosima, throw me your cloak. 
Yeah. Why? She wanted him to throw the cloak, not because of her shame, but so that he she wouldn't scandalize Zosima. You see the difference? There's a big difference there. Um, so I, I think I think that's the thing is, you know, the other part of it too is, you know, we, um, you know, we, it's such a hard thing to have a right orientation to your, to your body and to really, um, you know, be able to see your body outside of, it sounds crazy, but people objectify their own body. You know, I did, I did it for a living for a while. That was right. I mean, my, hey, um, I mean, I mean, let me sit back and you tell us I yeah. mean, you know, <laughs> because well, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's something that I've actually been thinking a lot about lately. A, a whole lot about I because I spent so much of my life. So, I mean, my living was concerned with me being hyper, hyper, hyper focused and concerned like on every inch of my bo- my own body, you know, and it in the beginning. And, th- and this is why I've been thinking about it so much is that in the beginning. I think and this was probably wrong, but like in the beginning it was like for others, right? This is what's going on in my mind. That like, I'm doing this for others. But then it, it, it very quickly became completely about my own perception. And, it's, and then it becomes like, it's an idol at that point, right? So everything that I'm doing, I mean, whether it's exactly what I'm, uh, exactly my diet, exactly my workout, exactly, you know, whatever kind of grooming, whatever this, that, the other, like, the right amount of tanning, this and, and everybody that I was around, and especially like in Vegas, you know, they would call like a beauty culture. Every one that I was interacting with was doing that with their own body. Mm-hmm. And, and yet, and yet the, the craziest part about it was that, and the saddest part about it was that as, you know, I would watch as people who had lived their lives like that, started to the natural things started to happen to their body they started to age Mm -hmm. and these sorts of things Mm -hmm. that they it it was this twisted thing because then they started to like not like their body then they wanted to get plastic surgery and implants and these sorts of things and put things that were not their body and so that then they could idolize that and so they, it, it was like in the beginning, it's like, oh, when there's youth and all of these things, it's like, oh, I'm idolizing this body. And then as it, when the body does what the body does, mm-hmm. then it's, it's, this, it's this weird flip to where it wasn't actually your body anyway. It was some weird, twisted mm-hmm. icon, really. Mm-hmm. Like it was a twisted icon. And now, and so then you look at some of these folks at, age 50 60 70 and they don't even look human anymore mm-hmm. right right they've come to they've come to become that that monstrous icon that they were always like oriented toward the whole time right yeah i it's it's funny too because i think one of the big things that um we never think about and even as as believers that the body taken apart from the beauty of the soul what is that you know what i mean like like what is that one of the things that's so interesting about um the saints this even gets into iconography in regards of this is why it's not really good i mean there's there's always exceptions right there's always exceptions but generally speaking you know the the um the iconic gaze, the icon, the iconographic gaze, it, it's one that is um, somewhat neutral, but it, it's it's it is a it's a gaze that is contemplative. It's a gaze that has, um, you know, you can get you can you can push it a little bit to you know someone may have. I'm a sorry, father. Gaze. I'm sorry, father. Hold on. Are you talking about the way that the icon is is looking? Correct. Correct. Okay. The, so that the, 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 the way the icon is looking. Yeah. The, um, the countenance of the icon, you can push it a little bit and have it be somewhat joyful, but never happy, you know, cause we can get into that. 
and you can get you can get it to where it's it's penitent where it's you know um almost like it has like that kind of you know uh bright sadness almost but it's never it's never you know uh, rem it's never a, a look of remorse or or it's never like moribund you know what i mean it, it's and that's because the soul and and the need for us to understand this this place of dispassion, this place of um, not being moved one way or the other. For us, we understand that as as something transcendent, you know. But it's important because it's not stoicism, although stoicism is an aspect of it. But it 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 it's, it's really more about this what was what could be perceived as stoicism is actually a stillness it's actually a peace that comes from being in the face of the uncreated one and in the face of the uncreated one all questions cease you know there's all questions cease all these things um there's nothing left but i mean to gaze upon the face of christ is is to have the fulfillment of existence. So the icon tries to depict this. And, and, and the reason why I think this is all pertinent is because what is an icon? But an icon is the depicting the expression of a transfigured human being, someone who has entered into theosis. Um, and these quote unquote depictions, they aren't simply spec, they aren't, they aren't speculative symbolism it is from experience, right? The, the noetic experience that's passed down in our tradition. And you can see this when you see certain pictures of certain saints. Um, you know, there's a wonderful uh, picture. The noetic of, posture. Uh, is that what you, noetic posture? Sorry, that's what. There's, you there's a wonderful picture oh. of, of uh, Elder Ephraim of Arizona. Where he's he's blessing, he's he's you know uh, blessing, giving a, a priest blessing, and his expression it's like one of the most you know if you type in Elder Ephraim giving a blessing it's like the picture that'll pop up, but it's a great example of like what that face looks like in someone who's encountering the holiness of God while they're living. You know what I mean? There's pictures, I mean, man, so many pictures of St. Sophroni are like this, where it's, it's just you look at it and you're like, whoa, you know, that person's, <laughs> God is inside that person, right? Um, and, and I think this is important to understand because people, if they don't know, you know, people, a lot of people, they've even come into the church, they're just not as familiar with the elders, which is another reason why the elders are so important because they are the living link to, to our tradition. But, you know, you, you look at pictures of these elders and you're like, the, the, you can see the grace of God in them. Like there's certain pictures of, of Blessed Sarah from Rose, the, his, his expression, you know, um, St. Gabriel, uh, St. Gabriel the Fool for Christ in Georgia. There's a video actually um, of St. Gabriel this might be worth pulling up. There's a video of St. Gabriel um, in- I'm on it. In, a, in the church, uh, pretty sure some Pablo, his monastery. Um, and it's incredible that we have this, but it's him walking in, he's in the church and he begins to pray. And they, there's a close up on his face and just his face and the way he's just looking up into heaven i mean um it's 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 high theology when you look at this footage of him um it's high theology to see his face it's high theology to see the face of saint saint Sophroni and to see his um i think i may have found it is it looks like maybe it's from 1994 maybe yeah is it like black and whitish kind of like kind of like yeah like green kinda... color grainy let me see if this is the one you could tell me well that would be probably right about what we're talking about here yeah hold on let me see if i can pull this in i'm scrolling through pictures of elder f from of arizona and it's shocking it's like uh -huh. it's shocking is this, the, is this the clip father 
This is the one. It's going to go up on his face in just a second. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard not to weep for me personally. It's, this is what we're talking about. Let me yeah. make the quality. Oh, that's as good as we get. It, it's grainy, but yeah, just watch this. Oh. Beautiful church too. Beautiful. But that I think it's earlier on, but that where it closes when it got close on his face. Uh, See what I could find this where we if we get back on him here. I mean, even his movements, what, what people may not understand is that he's praying and those aren't liturgical movements, that that's yeah. the movement of a saint. He's, I mean, he's, yeah. his movement is, is in prayer and some people can read, you know, hagiography, a lot of the saints and they can read even so, um, they're kind of like theological, um, works on, on the saints and, and there's these, um poetic or poetic like um literary tools that are used to describe it but people can get the mistake and be th and think like that's kind of flowery but whatever but when you look at saint gabriel there and his movements you understand those aren't liturgical movements mm. that's that's what it looks like the grace of god begins to be it's that is the dance right the the saint is it, their their life is a dance their movement is the expression of the holy spirit within them um yeah i mean that's i, I don't know what to say because the, i was thinking it's kind of funny i was thinking about this today um at liturgy today i was, I was contemplating on just um uh, just my life, you know, I've been talking, you know, done a couple of interviews, been thinking about my life a little bit more uh, recently, obviously because these interviews and people wanting my story and just reflecting on the fact that, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't stumbled into orthodox, God brought me here. I haven't stumbled into something that's like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let me kind of see where this takes me. It's like, no, this is it. This is where God meets man. And the evidence of that is in the saints. The evidence of that is look at that video of St. Gabriel and um, look at a video of, watch this. You'll show you how, I show you how far we are from things. Look at a video of Elder Ephraim and he, it can sometimes be, you know, uncanny, right? Because the whole, because our perspective of holiness is, is, is skewed. Right. There's certain movements like that. There's certain movements of elder friend, which can be like almost frighten you a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. There's certain there's certain aspects of St. Gabriel. I mean, there's certain aspects like you, when you encounter what is it because we are not purified. And when we encounter these human beings who have encountered the living God 
and the living God lives in them to such a such a high degree. It 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 is unnerving at times and even disturbing to us because even though like it goes to show how moralistic we are in our faith yeah i'm, I'm more that christian i don't drink i don't smoke and I, and I don't go with girls who do you know what i mean like however mm -hmm. people want to like break that down and it's like no man the it, it this isn't about that this is about this is about becoming yes truly human but something other and, and it happens in our bodies, uh, you know, grace isn't, people can conflate grace with, you know, you're having a good run because you had a good cup of coffee. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not it. That's not it. You can, you can get all kinds of good effects from having a good cup of Joe. That's not it. Right. When it's something completely different. You know? Well, it's kind of like in the Island, the, russian movie mm -hmm. we have so, the one monk who yeah uh what is it father we'll stroll. yeah the, we'll stroll, yeah yeah, yeah. The, the it's, one... funny, it's funny because that has come that movie has come up like four times in the last two days for me oh really literally yesterday a friend was like oh thanks for recommending that i just watched it we had a long little uh conversation about that movie not 12 hours ago andrew so Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry no. I interrupted. Continue. No, no, no. It's, it's all good. But, that, but like you have the one monk who is acting holy, who's walking around just like very proper, making sure his hands are always right here. His vestments are perfect. He looks wonderful. And then you have your grubby little, you know, which is like my whole thing. That's all I'm ever really going for is like just a little grubby guy that's like putting soot on stuff because I'm just like, oh, you know, these wretched little souls not an attempt to be holy but that's just what calls to me more um and like that if you were to look at these two people from a western sense you have your one monk that outwardly does appear much more holy much more and like not to spill anyone's tea but like my wife we watched that video and she was genuinely like a little bit frightened when she saw when he looked up the uh gabriel saint Gab saint gabriel mm -hmm. when he like looked up she was like, oh, wow, I don't, she was like, she, like, I felt her, like, recoil. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wow, yeah, that's something unearthly. That's mm -hmm. something that's, like, I don't mm -hmm. see very often. And, like, one, that's wonderful that she responded, because there, I could probably show that video to somebody, and they would be like, I don't see what the big deal is. He just right. kind of looks weird for a second. But it's, like, right. kind of brings it back to what we were talking about earlier. My wife has been a little bit more purified so as her soul is recognizing something that is unearthly. It's something that is, you know, transcends like what we think of as good and like, you know, um, so well, it's and seeing it's seeing really happen what like the grifty, you know, evangelical uh, Benny Hinn types and, and whatever Kenneth Copeland types, what you see them fake. Mm -hmm. It's seeing that happen for real. Mm -hmm. and that's the freak out mm -hmm. like that's where it's like whoo yeah you know yeah yeah it, it's also interesting to me too because you know saint gabriel uh there was a procession uh military procession with a portrait of lenin and he burned it <laughs> whoa yeah you might want to pull that up there's a little iconographic whoa. depiction of burning the portrait of lenin yeah and, um yeah they beat him for it i mean they beat him bad i mean they like they beat him bad you know um so yeah these narrow constructs of what we think holiness is it's like oh yeah here it is i've got it one second i'll see if i can't get it nice and big uh yeah yeah i love saint gabriel here it is um right here yeah oh, that's it that's right? yeah yeah that's so awesome that this is awesome that's the of that it's, it's it's awesome you know that might have to be my next tattoo he's, that's he's, really he's, cool yeah. <laughs> he's so great you know he's so great wow and like, even look at his face, the icon. It's Hold on, like, I'll, bring, I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. I mean, that iconographer is great who did it. Cause 
you look at his face it's like yeah that's it's like what's up mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean that's St. gabriel like if that's told bring it in <laughs> that's look at great. that <laughs> i love it i love it i love it's it i love so it great yeah classic wonderful icon it's wonderful yeah saint gabriel pray to god for us um it's kind of shocking i mean like i said before when you go through i was just googling elder ephraim and there's pictures of him just doing various things i mean even just like looking up from a book him like touching a prayer rope all of it is just so like that i think noetic posture that you were talking about yeah, I don't know if Super yeah. can put one of those up too. I mean, yeah, what are we doing? Yeah, of you course know? I can. Of Don't course, yeah. There's Let's one specifically it. of him. He's reaching into the Tetaron Father. Is that what it's called? The bread that we eat after communion. The Antidiron. Yes, thank you. I think it's from John Sandopoulos. Anyway, it doesn't have to be specific, but it looks so incredibly like it's the one that like I kind of like my jaw dropped a little bit when I saw it um uh hold, hold on i'll just i'll just roll through what sure. i've got here it's quite a quite obviously there's a lot there's a lot oh that i'm sorry uh you can't see what i'm pointing to no <laughs> <laughs> no that you one right there now that that through holiness <laughs> what should i be looking for if you wouldn't so? mind going up just a little oh is there something up yeah, there's there's a lot of good content here with me just telling you where to go online. Oh, right okay. there. So okay, go down just a little bit. Yes. Here. A little bit more. Yes. Stop. Tell me. So the okay. row right in the middle, right in the yes. middle. Yes. And then, uh, where's your mouse? Right here. It's in the middle. Okay, right there. That's it. This one. Yeah. I, it was the one that visibly struck me. Of oh it. yes. Let me uh, let me put that in a new tab. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at his expression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz he's doing something but it looks detached from what he's like thinking about. Like I don't know, to me that just said He's in the very... other world. Yeah. Otherworldly. Exactly. It's otherworldly for sure. He's in the other world. Yeah. I mean just even the act of him doing that is like symbolic in and of itself that I mean, he's that's... Doing... What we're looking at, that's an icon. Yeah. Totally. That, that's an icon. Totally. That my, my jaw that's, a, that's an icon right there. That's like a that's a meta icon. That's like a real icon of, of an icon. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. 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 I mean, the expression is the expression of an icon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And even look at his hands. Look at the, look at the yeah. grace. And the elegance of his hands, but but they're not, but they're not, they're not feminine in a in a fleshly fallen sense. But they're elegant. They're they're they're, they're yeah. graceful. His know? fingers almost seem to be bending at this super incredibly weird. Yeah, I mean, look, look at his look at, and this is something yeah. my professor taught me. He's one who opened my eyes to this, which I'm super. I'm going to boast on my professor. He was a cell attendant for Elder Cleopa, and he was like, you know. The thing is, when you see holy people, he called it. He called it my my shout out to my professor Nikolai Gavriel. Uh, he would call it the all these theotic features, and he mm. and, and I mean, he if anyone this this Nikolai Gavriel is is like the top guy in regards of iconological understanding. But he walked he walked me through all of these saints and all these icons. He's like, look here, 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 and you see all these all these points where these where elders are becoming icons mm. right so mm. understand that icons are actually emu- emulating what happens to the the features of a human being who's encountered the grace of god to such a degree that they're becoming deified right so the, the icon, icon is a realistic depiction yeah it's the not icon a metaphoric de- icon depiction icon isn't like some stylized like oh we're right going for, right it's it's depicting it's presenting something, it's, pre- it's presenting a phenomena, right? Mm. It's presenting a phenomena and you see it right here in this picture. Look at his hands. Like- I mean, those his, look like the hands of an icon. Yeah, his left hand, especially. Like, look at the hand holding the bread, yes, but look at his left hand. 
Mm-hmm. That that I mean, tell me that doesn't look like an icon. I mean, that's exactly. You know what I mean? My job. There's an elegance that happens um, in the icon with the proportions they begin to to be elongated, and I mean, we're seeing it right there in the elder. You know. So, I mean, that's just one picture of, of many where this is, this, is, this is brought forth, you know. Elder Cleopa is another one. You look at Elder Cleopa and... Uh, you want me to do Elder Cleopa? Yeah, let me go, you look let me at go on Cleopa, Elder, Elder like Cleopa search here. You, you start seeing the face of... Uh, so many icons are, are represented in the face of the Elder, you know. Father, did you hear the story I told Cyprian when you were looking up the Elder Cleopa quote um, about St. Nicholas? Elder Cleopa quote. Oh, I'm sorry, not Elder Sim Cleopa. St. Simeon. St. Simeon. Simeon. Simeon, I'm sorry. No. I can, that can wait. Yeah. Okay, okay, stop. Go, okay, stop right there, Cyprian. Yes. Yes. So go to the left. Okay. The top left, top, top. Okay. okay, the black and white one next to him. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you see that right there? This, this is this is a younger yeah. him, I guess. Yeah, that's a younger him, right? Mm-hmm. Let me open in a new tab, and let me uh, make it bigger. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you can yeah. see. You see it? Yeah. There's a. I mean, it's he's it's like an icon. It's an icon. You, you know what I mean? And there's, and when, and especially if you know the elder, if you spent any time with him, you know, communing with him through his writings, whatever, you, you, you get it, you feel it. Go back now and let's look at one, some of the older ones of the mm -hmm. elder. Um, look at that one right there. This one? Uh, to the right. That one right there. Look at that right there. This one with yeah. the sideways. Yeah. Look at that. Let me get bigger. Yeah. Look at that. What a mm -hmm. mercy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a man who suffered greatly for his people. This is a man who was truly a bishop and a shepherd to a whole nation, right? Um, the, the tax of the demons that he saw visibly with his own eyes, you know? Um, if you guys are good with this, let's do one more. Let's go to yeah, um, absolutely. Because a lot of people are, are familiar with them, but let, let's um, let's do one of, of Saint Sophroni. Let's look at some of his yep. actual uh, photos. I mean, poof. oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sophroni is like, I mean, intensity. We could be uh, here for days. Yeah. I mean that one right there. Go the one you your your mouse was on. Go down. Yeah. It's him and, and Saint Silouan together. Oh, and Saint Silouan? This yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, Saint I mean, Silouan's another one. It, I mean, oh Saint Silouan. Yeah. My gosh. Lord Let's have see. mercy. Okay. I mean, that's in my office right here. I mean, that the I mean, wow. I mean, gosh. The dispassion. The dis yeah, that's God bless the, you, that's Andrew. True. Yeah, God that's the you. that's the word. The that's dispassion. The oh, God forgive me for being such a sinful, wretched man. God forgive me. Yeah. Look at Sophroni. Oh Which you can't even fake that because <clears throat> it's a good movie. And I never mean to speak ill of it, but that was one of the things that that Man of God movie saint nectarios you can't fake that because the actor was told be dispassionate be he was dis trying and god bless him for trying but like 100 percent, it just came off deadpan but yeah i mean i mean honestly like because he's not there it's not like, let's just be clear right we're looking at two human beings like they both encountered the the uncreated light of god but Saint Silouan, you look at his eyes. That's a person yeah. where Jesus Christ actually came and spoke to him. Mm. Like those are the eyes of someone that has seen the Lord 
in, in the flesh. Mm. He, those eyes that we're there looking at us right now, Christ spoke to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, it's, yeah. And it's obvious. I mean, there's something because there's like, yes and no, Cyprian. Yes and no, because here's mm -hmm. the thing. So like people knew, like apparently there's accounts like a lot of people knew about his holiness on, 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 on Athos, but mm. not everyone knew, you know what I mean? And that's, mm. that's the thing. What people lose out on, uh, Sophroni had years of obscurity mm -hmm. and, and just being hidden like that. And that should, that's what should be frightening for people. That should be very terrifying for people that, mm. in fact, God could, that's the Grand Inquisitor, Dostoevsky, like God, yes. Christ could be with you right there in the flesh and you don't even recognize it. How terrifying. You know, we, we could be spouting off, and this sounds trite, but we could be spouting off or we could be driving by that dude holding up a sign. I mean, forgive me, but like, you, you don't know. And so when we just disdain, we look with disdain with someone, it's like, you don't know. And that's the thing. Those eyes, those eyes, not only, they don't need to try to find Christ in everything. They see Christ in everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And that's what the Ascension's all about. Because they, because of them, we know that it's possible to have a foretaste. Is it difficult? Yes. It is difficult, but it's possible. Mm. Yeah, yeah this is this is this is very this is very profound. This is very profound. And it it's a very it's a very different way. Like this is this is just not it's just not a Western thing because of this dichotomy between like the spiritual and the body that it's like you you can go one or you could go the other and that and and also I don't I think that the people that are held up as particularly spiritual in the West even those who are representatives of like, let's say far Eastern ideas or whatever. Yeah. That, that look, that dispassion, it's not, it's not there. It's not there in the people that are held up in the West. And I think that. Well, there's a stoicism. And again, that's why I brought up. It's like, that's not stoicism. No, it's something different. That's something different. When you're, when you're looking at, when you're looking at someone, when it gets a Freudian, it's not stoicism, right? And I think this is important because this has kind of been one of the themes um, we were hitting on a couple weeks in a row about, you know, there's, we may use similar terms, similar definitions. Yeah. People may come and look for certain things in the church, but let's just be clear, like, what the way that you understand something and the way the church understands something isn't always the same. Right. So, you know, the church gives us these eyes and ears to, to hear and to see. And, uh, you know, what in our natural state, running off our, you know, intellectual brawn, we see things as stoicism, we think of Marcus Aurelius, and we just whatever, wherever we want to go to in regards of the human self and, and, the kind of perfection of, of, of human civilization and, and, and all those things, which aren't bad in themselves per se, but they, but they are bad by themselves, right? They are bad in of themselves, but they are bad by themselves because by themselves, it's chiliasm. By themselves, it's this desire for utopianism that is built without God, whether it's the temple of the body or whether it's the temple of UMB Bank. Whatever, whatever that's going to be, we try to assemble these artifices without God. You know, God isn't mad that there's, God isn't mad that you work out. God isn't mad that you're healthy. God isn't mad that you want your body to be running on optimum. That's great. But is your body a temple to God or is a body to lust 
right? Excuse me. Is your body a temple to God or is your body a temple to lust? Is your body a temple mm -hmm. to your own self? Is your body a temple to the God narcissist? Is your body a temple to the God Venus, Aphrodite? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are you really doing? I think this is important because, you know, food for the body and, you know, the, the body, you know, food for the stomach and the stomach, you know, it, it's, it's going to go the way of, of everything else. I think um, this is, that was so, so important. You know, that these things aren't bad in and of themselves, but that they're bad by themselves. Mm -hmm. That that really struck something in me because I have looked at so many times in my life and so many pursuits that I've had. And also now as I'm starting to. Because I'm seeing those same. Those same I'm getting a little bit of goosebumps because it's really hitting me kind of hard, like seeing those same things that I was pursuing as good, right? Not the good, but good, right? Whether these are like fitness things, whether these are intellectual things, whether these are like social things, like, ah, being better with women and this and that. And, you know, and there's the manosphere type of stuff and all of these things, right? Whether it's like intellectual, whether it's having the psychological down, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, right? Knowing the band, as Andrew has said before, right? It's like, I know the band. Mm -hmm. those things that I pursued as like good and now looking and seeing how not the, and 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 not that those things were bad like I still look at them and I'm like they're good but I see that they were empty mm -hmm. and that even as those pursuits come up or I encounter there's there's really I I get this feeling and it's not like a bad feeling where I'm like pushing it away but somebody who's like oh I should be doing, or you should be doing, or we should all be doing X, Y, Z thing. And it's about, you know, fitness. It's about uh, whatever. whatever, you know, the yeah. intellectual, this, and the, oh, you know, Western culture and all of these things, the, the form of it. And there's no, there's nothing spiritual first. There's no orientation toward Christ first. And it's like, well, how do you even know what you should be doing? Yeah, I mean, there's, the, the, what's crazy is how, you start waking up to how little substance there really is. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I think this is how, you know, I've, I've lived in neighborhoods where, um, you know, not to denigrate people, but it's the example that popped in my head. I've lived in neighborhoods, very poor neighborhoods. I think about one neighborhood my wife and I lived in, um, we were like early married and uh, there's a different kind of obesity that you see there. There was a different kind of obesity that we saw there. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, kind of riffing right now, but like, yeah, I think that ob that obesity that we saw there was an obesity of like a way of living where the diet is full of what, you know, those empty calories. And so, you know, I, I'm making that correlation because it's, it may not even necessarily all be about gluttony of the people, but rather the food that they're eating has no substance. There's no nutritious, there's no nutri, uh, nutritious value to it. And so they consume and consume and like they never, they're never full and never sustains them, right? But it, it transforms their body. It becomes bloated in particular ways. It becomes the body begins to work against itself in particular ways. And I think this is the thing to understand when people consume spiritual and philosophical information. They just consume and consume and consume and there's no real substance there. You can, you can, you know, you can start seeing a gluttonous bloated spirit, a gluttonous, excuse me, gluttonous bloated soul and mind. And it's just like, oh yeah, you're eating, but you're not exercising. And moreover, what you're eating is just like hostess cakes, man, you know? But I saw it on the other side too, father. Like, I mean, when I was in Vegas, the, the gym that I worked out at was like, that's where all the pros worked out at. Like 10 time Miss Olympia, Iris Kyle and uh, uh, Hidetata Yamagishi, who's always in the top three Mr. Olympia, right? They owned the juice bar. Like they were there like working out next to me. And so there's all these pro bodybuilders and fitness models and all of this stuff in there. 
but so often it, it's it was it's the other side so it's like totally ro- a royal path sort of situation mm-hmm. because in this it was also like empty reps mm-hmm. you know very different than for instance you know when i would see for instance like when the boxers were there and they were training when there were boxers who were training for a fight and they were in the gym or when like the the mma guys were in there and they were training and doing their thing it was like first off the way their bodies looked were different because they had an orientation towards something functionality yeah like i'm i i have a purpose that i'm moving toward and i'm going to do this right as opposed to just like well my purpose is to be building this muscle bigger 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 Mm -hmm. you know and so then it's a type of and you look and it's like it's just as Mm off-putting as had they been as their bodies were just as off-putting looking mm-hmm. as if they had been sitting on the cat. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. well, that's not attractive. Right. right. It's not like something in me is saying there's something wrong when I'm looking <laughs> at you, but you're obviously, but their diets were like super strict and like sure. all these sure. supplements. So sure. it's like I mean, on I think both he, sides. It's a great world path example. I really think it is because they're both suffering from the same thing, but it's the different extremes in regards of result. You know what I mean? Um, and, and yeah, I just think that this is, this is important to understand because um, to think that has nothing to do with the soul is false. You know, your, your body doesn't get a certain way and it not affect your soul and vice versa. And this is this is important to understand because I think I think if there's a maybe if there's a takeaway for tonight, it would be to begin to really you know if you haven't already started thinking about that, um, you know when we when we say spiritual, don't think of just the invisible, don't just think about you know when we say spiritual, most people are thinking about feelings, or they're thinking about philosophical yeah. thoughts and ideas. No, no, no. Spiritual is is the whole person, right? Because if you are just, when you say spiritual and you're just thinking just about kind of your inner kind of predilections and movements, then you're falling more into Gnosticism than you are an Orthodox understanding, right? But of course, we're obviously not just talking about the temple of the body, right? But it's both, it's, it's, it's both, because that's what we are. We don't have a body and a soul. We are soul and body. That's what we are. And that's why it's unnatural for us to die. That's why it, it's it's not supposed to be. It's natural, right? That's because that's the soul and the body are not meant to be separated. They're, they're, the separation is, is because of the fall. So this is really important because, you know, you can read all you want, if you're out there and I'm interested in spirituality land, I'm interested in orthodoxy land, you can read all you want, but there's gonna come a point where you're gonna start turning into that dude, you know, the the bodybuilder on the right or the, you know, or the poor, <laughs> the poor obese person on the left. Um, at some point in time, you're gonna have to actually get in there and, and do something. You're gonna to have to go to services if you can. You're gonna to have to make prostrations. You're gonna to have to make the sign of the cross. You're gonna to have to engage your senses. You're gonna to have to engage the gates, you know? And and this is really important because it, I, I am just dead set on people cannot just think of orthodoxy as an ideological intellectual exercise because it's not. It involves the body just as much as it does in fact, maybe even more so for, for a period, for a period of time, for a period of time, maybe even more so, you know? Yeah. I had to do a bunch of body stuff. Then my soul was going to catch up. Like I had to start by doing like whatever pro- prostrations or just standing in church, even though nothing was happening inside of me, I just had to kind of just keep standing there just because like eventually something would change. So like I needed to engage my body first because it was all pretty dead in there. Um, Cyprian, unless you had a question, um, I had something I wanted to cover. Uh, Go ahead, uh, sir. With something that I was thinking about, because I'm confused, shocker, but I'm confused about something that uh, I was talking with the brother from the church 
this last week and I forgot how we were talking about it, but basically I said something along the lines of, oh, well, you know, the spirits, the fallen spirits have been around for eons, you know, they've been around much longer than we have. And he's like, no, that's not true. He's like, no, we were created about the same time, the angels and humanity. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then he was like, and then he was like, and um, I was like, oh, but I thought that they were uncreated. He's like, no, they're not uncreated. They're immaterial. So I wanted to know what the difference between uncreated and immaterial was. God alone is uncreated. Okay. Okay. So then immaterial is just like, so God is like doing his own thing. We shouldn't say immaterial. We should say incorporeal. Okay. Okay. There's, there's still materiality to the angels, but it's so much finer than what we understand, you know? Okay. I guess I had thought that there was this. Only God is pure spirit. I, I'm wrong, but this is the line. It was uncreated was everything over here. And then created was everything over here. And we were the one right here. No, what it is, is God's uncreated and everything else is created. <laughs> oh, okay. That's better. All right. That's, there you yeah. go. God alone is uncreated. And that's why God is God. Okay. Asked and answered. But the angels, but the angels and the demons have, they have to have some materiality yeah. to yeah. them because they can interact in the material world. Yeah. They yeah. can do that's things why, in the material world. Absolutely. That's why it's not. I don't think it's complete, completely accurate to say immaterial. That's why we say incorporeal. Okay. Uh, they're, but we call them bilis, but like there's a materiality to them. You know, it's like uh, St. Nikolai. Um, I'm going to botch it, but, you know, I think we talked about this before maybe. So forgive me if I'm being redundant. Um, let me see if I can get this right. Um, so earth is finer than water water is finer than air uh no excuse me earth is finer than water water is finer uh <laughs> water is finer than earth uh fire is finer than water air is finer than than fire uh electricity is finer than air and the and the spirit is uh even finer than that so it's like there there's this um kind of hierarchy right did, did it's you, like a pyramid going down to like whatever how do you want to look at it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter but point being is like the materiality and seeing how you know when you're looking at yeah water is finer than than earth you can understand that right you can understand how fire is finer than water, right? You can understand how air is finer than fire. Electricity is finer than air, right? Electricity moves through air like it's nothing, right? Electricity is finer than air, right? And the ether is finer than the electricity, right? So the angels, and when we talk about them being incorporeal, you know, they're not uncreated and there is a materiality to them, but in, from our perspective, it might as well be not. They might as well be immaterial from our perspective, right? But there's a materiality to them just so finer than what we experience or understand. So then what's at what level? Oh, excuse is... me, that's the other one. Light is finer than, than electricity, right? Okay. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, right? So it's just, yeah, anyways. So at, so at what level is, so the transfigure is the transfigured body at a different level yeah. of fineness. Yeah. Than this yeah. Body? Or, or maybe a better way to understand it, obviously, not obviously like in a disrespectful way, but maybe a different way yeah, to yeah. understand it is the transfigured body is hmm. like period. Right. Because Jesus ate honeycomb and fish, and he's able to appear mm. wherever he wants, whenever he wants, and walk through walls, right? And the saints have a similar thing, right? The saints are participating in this grace of God. The saints don't have this in of themselves, right? But they're participating because they're in the life of Christ, the theosis, right? 
So the Saints, we see the Saints walking through walls, Saints being able to buy and locate, Saints being able to interact with things. You keep saying, I'm sorry, sorry, biolocate. What is that, Father? It can be, be in two places two at place. once, right? Yeah, like boom, gotcha. boom, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Some of the silliness of me was burned away by looking at those iconic pictures of saints. Good. Some of the silliness was burned away. So, um, which, you know, we'll see. Oh, it'll make There's it still, it'll, still it'll come left. back. It'll come back. It has an amazing regenerative quality. So, <laughs> I've told people before it's like, hey, you know, we'll see how far this goes. But, you know, when I come face to face with Christ, probably in the same way that Peter was like babbling nonsense during the transfiguration. I was, I'll be like, um, like, like babbling, like really stupid jokes. Be like, eh. so where's heaven, right? Is this heaven? Is this heaven? Where's heaven? Um, but I, at the same time, so then the, uh, say, because like demons have appeared to saints as like specifically, like, I think like old, old men before. So like, there is like a materiality there. And like, is that, just on a whim i mean like can they just do that like and again i'm not this is not tolkien fiction i'm not looking for like a, a like a super substantial answer but uh, substantial but like an actual like you know like wikipedia entry but like they've appeared to saints to the point where the saint themselves was fooled into thinking that they were just any other person so like obviously demons can do that so there has to be some kind of like corporeal like like elements. Yeah, I won't be so quick to say that because I, I think one of the things you got to understand is um, the power of suggestion um, and, the, and really in, don't maybe put the emphasis on the, the demon being able to shape shift, but rather distort the perception of the person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That tracks. That makes more sense. Yeah, because. Um, I forget, but there was some saint that who had fallen into deception. I don't know if he was in a saint. He might have just been a regular old, regular old monk. But um, he said that an angel that was with him was praying with him and asking for mercy. And his spiritual father was saying, I guarantee it. It's not like it's not doing that. And then he was like, no, he's praying for mercy. He's like, no, really listen next time. I guarantee it. He's not doing that. And then he did. And he kind of realized he was like, the angel was mumbling was like mumbling and it sounded like like when i'm singing in church and i don't know like the you words fool. i never asked for mercy yeah exactly exactly but oh. kind of like in church when i don't know the words but i know the melody i'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like but i don't know the exact thing of what they're saying so i'm just like uh yeah but um that it was tricking the perception of that particular monk to the point where he was like, because that's like that sure fire thing of like, if an angel appears, you know, make the sign of the cross or, and then like, I think even the angel was angel was making the sign of the cross. And so the monk was like, no, this checks out. And the spiritual father's like, I don't think so. I still don't, I, don't, I still don't think so. And it turns out shocker. He was wrong. The monk was wrong because I think the story ended up going that, he asked him the devils will never repent yeah yeah the devils will never repent and it's that like oh what it's like no yeah his spiritual a, father thought a thought and was like ask the angel to tell you what this thought is and then come back and tell me what it is mm -hmm. and the angel's like i don't need to do that come on like don't do that and then things kind of went to worse and the monk realized and then they're like yes the angel turned into what he truly was is like i'll never repent you know blah 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 you're a fool your soul is mine that type of you know nonsense so but well the entire demon the entire demonic game is a game of perception right like that's the that's yeah. if the perception is changed then you know there you go off the cliff I, it's one of the things that i find um it's not to discourage anyone, but it's it's one of the areas where I'm. It's it's a real struggle just as a priest is trying to get people to understand this because, 
the spiritual warfare is fought primarily in the thoughts, but that doesn't mean that the chemistry of the body isn't involved. And this gets us into this whole thing with mental health. It's like, yeah, like it's not, it's not a demon. It's my mental health. It's like, yeah, it's both. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like your, your, your twisted fallen broken chemistry is, is being capitalized on and probably even got there because of demonic suggestion. You know what I mean? Like your great grandpappy started drinking and start rewiring your bloodline. Your daddy's a drunk, you know what I mean? Your grandpa's a drunk or whatever. Your mama's a drunk, whatever the thing is, you know, that's affecting your genes, you know? Your, your great grandma was, you know, neurotic and that affect, you know, neurotic and depressed and that affect her brain chemistry. And guess what? That got passed down to you, but it all started with a spiritual moment that was unable to be addressed. And so, yeah, your chemistry is messed up, but that doesn't mean there isn't a spiritual um, therapy to it. And it also does, those, those things aren't mutually exclusive. You know what I mean? And that's, that's probably one of the biggest things uh, getting back into the body portion of it. It's like, it's like, no, it's the devil, man. You know, it, it's the devil. Um, but you, you know, you're going to have to um, slow down a little bit and realize um, before you can start tackling, you know, quote unquote, noetic understanding, you need to get some real basics down first. It's like, um, I had to learn this the hard way, but you can't, you know, you, you can't give someone who's an addict deep spiritual principles. You got to get them order and you got to get them some, you got to get some basic discipline to them. You got to get some basic accountability and some basic humility on a moral level. You know, if, it's almost like if they can just get a hold of that, God bless them. Like, because a lot of people who are coming out of addiction, they're so twisted. Their, their minds are so twisted, metaphorically and literally. It's like just trying to get them to like um, zero is, is a huge feat. So many people are starting off at negative nine. And like, you think like, man, this person's such a wreck. It's like, yeah, I should have seen them four years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, people don't see that, but it's, it is a real battle. And it's a real battle in the body and the soul, not either or both. Yeah, those addicts. Well, the whole culture of yeah. like, there's, there's a pill for that, right? Like the entire culture of there's a pill for that. Just to me has always seemed... Like, even as a materialist, it seemed the complete wrong orientation. And perhaps it's, you know, like fitness background, all of that being sensitive to my body and all of that. I was like, whoa, there's not like, there's not just to pill for that because whatever point you got to, you got there through a set of behaviors and beliefs and an orientation of all the things that are happening. And it's like, no, 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 but it's this. And it's like, no. No, it's, there's a series of things. There's a series of things. I mean, even if it's like, well, and, and I mean, I'm saying this is, this is me, like materialist me, even if it's like, well, I got, I got hit by a bus. I wasn't paying attention. I got hit by a bus. Now I've got like broken collarbone, all of these things, right? I'll probably be worse than that. I got hit by a bus moving very slow, but it's like, how did you get into the middle of the road? where the bus could hit you. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you not paying? Why were you not mm -hmm. paying attention? What were the things on your mind? What had you not paid attention to? Like before that, like all of these things. Yeah. And that's even materialist to me. Now I realize that it's like, oh, can I add in the fact that there's like entities that hate me? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> like, I mean, oh, those things back there. Oh yeah, your attention was on that because they hate you. That's right. That's right. And getting back to the addicts, because that's something that I feel comfortable talking about is like, um, I, I don't really have a whole lot of theology to back this up other than the vague notions that I've gotten from the church. But I mean, I don't, and Cyprian and I talked about a little bit about this, but like, what contracts are you entering into with whatever deities you whatever like small little like small g gods you're like engaging with in the middle of your addiction because i remember in the ways of like my my 
My house and on. What's that? Sorry. We are legion. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's kind of what like because like the um, you father you said that that o ring that youtubers use you know like that was what i thought god was when i was drunk because like you know there's i don't remember what saint said but god can only really come to you when you're at peace like and so i was like oh well i'm at peace now because i'm drunk like so that's when god's able to like actually come to me so i just need to keep getting drunk like that's when I start to actually like am able to like engage with God or somebody could say the same thing about like smoking pot or something like that. They're like, you know, well, I'm all anxious and stuff and I feel more spiritual when I smoke pot and stuff. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, you probably do, but what contracts are you entering into? And one of the, the, the little Orthodox, I guess, Orthodox flair I bring to when I'm talking to people at my work is like, you guys have been out playing in the stratosphere with small g gods in your addiction you've been out there like living in your own little private dimensions with your own little small g gods doing the things that you think you need to be doing and it's time for you to come back down and like to reality and actually like have your feet on the ground because that's when you meet the big g god and like god's going to meet you where you're at but like speaking of how little substance there is to anything the neurotic behaviors that come when people start entering into sobriety of like the quote-unquote professional good american citizen things that they start doing in like this manic frantic pace of like no 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 I i'm gonna i'm gonna start doing this i'm gonna start doing, i'm gonna go back to college i'm gonna start making my own soap and selling it at farmers markets i'm gonna start like i've been there I've yeah i've been there man and it's it's like you're doing everything you can to just avoid sitting there. And I don't blame you because it's really, really hard. And yeah, your addiction has ravaged your body in the same way and your mind and your soul in the same way it's ravaged my mind and my soul. And I mean, I'm not sure I'm back to zero, but like that discipline, that need to like stand in reality for just like a moment is it's honestly, sometimes it seems like it's too much to ask for people because especially in America, I mean, especially in America where it's like, distraction 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 at all times so well when you then when you fail with the soap at the farmer's market then you're right back to to drinking like because yeah. that's how you're going to console yourself because what's the point because 80s movies have taught me that if i start to try and do something it's going to succeed and if i try hard enough it's going to succeed and i'm trying hard enough because i'm sinking all of this energy into it it should work and when it doesn't work then none of this makes sense. Why am I even doing this? Because well, and, but where did the idea to do it come from anyway? You know, that's the key. Yeah. It's like, where did the idea come from to do something that you shouldn't have been doing in the first place? It's like, oh, probably the same place that the idea came from when you first started drinking. Exactly. You and you know, one. This is. I. I don't want to turn into like Andrew's land, but the <laughs> one of the. Um, things I, I tell people sometimes when I'm working with them is especially it's like, look, I don't really want to be doing the same. I don't listen to really the same music anymore. I don't really have any of the same habits. I don't really do any of that stuff I did in my addiction because I'm not looking for the same feelings anymore. I'm not looking for that same stuff anymore. If, if your life looks pretty much the same as far as activities go, except you're substituting like a monster energy drink for alcohol, there's a problem. You know, like if you're still living, if you're still like constantly on your phone on Facebook, if you're constantly like not even if you're 90 days into sobriety and you're going to like Royals or Chiefs games and it's not bothering you that you're not drinking, then like you're not being honest with yourself and something's up. Like if you're like if you feel the need to go get an energy drink instead of like, you know, liquor before every work every day. Sure. Whatever. That's fine. That's not a huge deal. Drink your energy drink, do whatever you got to do. But at the same time, something's wrong. You know, like you're still trying to go for the same elated feelings that take you past 11, you know, you know, you've broken through nine and 10 and you're to 11 now, and you're still looking for all those same feelings, but your orientation still faced wrong you're not facing the right way and you're, you're facing the wrong direction. So, you know, but pff, nobody listens to me. 
but that's all right. No, yeah. they pay you. <laughs> that day, I mean, I'm crying all the way to the bank and pretty much being broke the day after I get paid because I do my work because God called me not to talk. God called me to it, not because it pays well, but um, so I think we're at two hours. Just about. Yeah, I think we are at two hours. So um, what do you guys want to see added to the playlist? Because I don't have a second question. <laughs> I, I had to add, I frantically texted my friend Nathan before to be like, give me a question. I need a question, preferably with food. I just need something with food. But um, what do we want to see? Well, maybe that's you have gone on there. Gone. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're not on Spotify. Oh, they're not. Oh, no, terrible. I know that was the first one I thought of, but they're off Spotify and Apple Music. Well, maybe speaking of Spotify, maybe we should mention that we. I don't think we mentioned it on the show. That. Um, oh yeah. By by some requests. One. We are, we are one request. <laughs> we are the the show is on Spotify. So for those of you who would prefer to check out Spotify, anybody who's a viewer or listener, I know some people are probably just listening on YouTube. So if they want Spotify, I'm now. I have to I say, sure hope they're listening. They're not sitting there watching me for two hours while I'm sitting here. Like I, I you know, I I kind of like to have, even if it's just conversations. I do like. But I'm a big like body language person. Yeah. So like I like it, it adds to it for me. But for those who don't care, we are on Spotify. I am generally trying to disabuse myself from platforms, but since Spotify kept Joe Rogan and they kind of stood up to uh the church of woke, <laughs> I'm like, they're kind of they're good in my book for now. I mean, again, my book for now, they're crying all the way to the bank. I mean, (laughs) like what Neil Young with his like two and a half million listeners versus Joe Rogan's 10 million listeners. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a numbers game, but yeah, I could be still good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm still have my subscriptions. So, yeah. So there you go. Spotify. If people want to go check it out. Yep. The Royal Path on Spotify. And it looks real nice, too. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. It does. I think the colors and everything it matches with their platforms because they're you know they got the black and it's everything's dark. It it looks nice. I think it looks real nice. Nice. So that was a good suggestion. Bravo. I got Sabbath and Beastie Boys and Smash Mouth and Abba and um, some other stuff on there. I got Cher and Celine Dion. And I was like, what, what did you put on uh, Jimi Hendrix Machine Gun? I did. I did. It's on there. It's that on was there. Like I saw that. Three. I was like, oh, there it is. I have a live version. That's, that's, that's one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know if there was a recorded version. Um, but uh, I was like, what an, eclectic, uh, what an eclectic little group of folks we have here. Because like, I'm not like a guy that's typically like, check out how weird we are. But like, <laughs> we do have legitimately Celine Dion and black sabbath and necrophagist all on the same playlist because well, they're all evil <laughs> all right i mean yeah Celine Dion is pretty evil but yeah i would say <laughs> she's a weird lady shout out shout out to Celine. i saw her live in las vegas i bet you did just the did. once it was it was only once okay i've yeah. seen quite a few people live in las vegas i saw her once um pretty what 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 would you say i mean you know they they kind of get to to pick and choose their own shows and this was at caesars where like all the divas are where adele was supposed to be and all of that and celine in her show she comes out and there's i mean the forum that this coliseum or whatever they call their theater in the round type of thing it's the, the stage is huge. Like the to the roof is maybe, I don't know, it's got to be 60 or 70 feet. It's huge. She comes out, she's singing in front of this curtain. There's a curtain and the stage is still gigantic, right? So she comes out all by herself. There's a curtain behind her. That's the setup, right? This gigantic curtain that goes across the whole entire stage. 
she's singing or whatever and she's doing the like love will go our love will go on or heart, my heart will go on my this, heart will go on the song that melted the heart of an entire nation didn't she's one take do- by the way walked into the really studio, came in belted that song out and left she did it in one take one take one take i'm just saying well let me t- well let me I tell you Celine Dion. she's an amazing musician let me tell you she she was really doing it live like and it was legit oh, like yeah. completely legit and the other thing was she knew it was legit oh, like yeah. when you look at somebody and they're like you're like oh you know how bad you are like you really she really did and she came out she and she's probably saying that so who knows how many hundreds of times but yeah. she was killing it bro and then the curtain fall this gigantic curtain just like the whole entire thing falls to the ground and behind her there's like th- a band like there's got to be 200 people in this oh band my gosh, like three awesome. stories tall. that is and so she's just going and i was like okay you win <laughs> you got me during the i'm song, here for the show <laughs> during the song right during the song oh, I know exactly. it's when the crescendo the, the crescendo. crescendo of the song and, then, oh, and the whole thing goes whoop to the ground and then there's this, and the band is just lit up, and it's like they're on tiers, like three tiers. It's got to be two hundred people in this band. I have goosebumps right now. This woman it's, is amazing. it's insane. Yeah, she's, this woman she's is pretty amazing. dope. She's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. No, I I love Celine Dion. I've gone on the record many times. I'm a big old <laughs> fan of Celine Dion. So not the deep she, cuts, but all of her hits. Right, I'm into her. Hits. Right, yes, like yes, I, yes, her greatest com- greatest hits compilation. I just want to throw the whole monkey wrench in there. What about her with her like Satan baby clothing? Well, that's the thing. That's oh. that's where that's where it all goes wrong. That's where it all and goes it wrong. Somehow got wrapped up in this whole like late '80s Christian mom thing, where like suddenly like people were like, um, like Celine Dion's like this like Christian wholesome woman, and like she's like. The flower is the vagina type of thing. It's like, no, what are you it, talking about? <laughs> no, this is a real this thing. This is a thing. This no, was this a is thing. A, absolute, a real thing. Yeah. That, like the late 80s, early 90s, like moms who were also like listening to like Celine Dion were also listening to like worship music and mm-hmm. like would go to those like precious moments, like Bible bookstores and stuff like that in the mall. This is at least happening in Missouri. And my mom was not the only one. Like, I've run into lots of moms. So then, actually, really quick, doesn't have to be a whole thing. Now that Cyprian's talking about it, what is your the best live show you've been to? Like, doesn't have to be, like, the most amazing, but just, like, you were like, wow, that was a good, good, good show. Because mine was supposed to be my bachelor party, um, but all my friends bailed, and I ended up taking my bride-to-be, too. We went and saw Meshuga. And that was a show I had been sober for maybe like six months and I didn't, um, it's not the best show I've ever seen, but I, that was a show that I was like transported to like the fourth dimension for a little while, like stone cold sober. And I would like, I went to that show and I didn't need anything. Like those guys killed it. Like, absolutely. They like, they got something going on with their music because they all seemed huge on stage and it was just an amazing show and they played all I don't know the best show. I can tell you who consistently because I've been blessed to see all my favorites I've seen except for like like deep, deep favorites except for the on and Kate Bush and that's just like impossible. But everyone else I've seen. Oh, Kate Bush needs to go on the playlist. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I gotta tell you, man, consistently, like just shows where it's like there's something else going on here. It's 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 David Eugene Edwards, man. Woven hand shows. I mean, it's yeah, the dude just something takes him over, man. And it's it's wild. I've seen him lots of times, and I mean, he, I, I some shows I've been like, oh man, like. <laughs> How many times have you seen him, Father? If you had to throw a number. Uh, he played Cornerstone? Yes. Uh, eight. Eight times, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I got some the deep, deep area. Paul Weller, I've seen Paul Weller a bunch of times. I've seen Dead Can Dance. 
you know, multiple hardcore bands. Like I've seen, you know, Chorus of Disapproval, Sick of It All. Um, you know, I've seen all these like great hardcore bands. I never saw Crow Mags. That's that's another one, another thing I never saw. I never saw Crow Mags, but like I've seen some incredible hardcore shows. I've seen some incredible punk shows. Um, I've seen a couple of really good hip hop shows. Um, what was seen, a good hip hop show you saw, Father? Uh, there was a club in Long Beach and I saw, I didn't even know the cats. Um, but this was when, um, oh my goodness. Um, my boy Bill's gonna shout me out on this one. They were a proto, like proto, and not Limp Bizkit, none of that, but it's like before Rage, House of House of Suffering, House of Suffering. Mm. And um, man, it wasn't Fenders. Uh, it was, um, oh my gosh, it's gonna come to me. I'm gonna scream it in the middle of the night, 2 a.m. <laughs> um, that was one of the best examples of just a hip hop cadence. I mean, it was just the, 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 the MC was just incredible. It was incredible. Um, and I saw actually a really good battle, gosh, in LA, probably around 2003, 2004. Uh, 2003, 2002. Um, didn't know any of the people. It's all amateur. It's all just like live battle right there. Um, but that was incredible to actually watch that. Like actually kind of like see that because the energy, it, it's one of those things where like the, the energy from a live like battle, a live hip hop mm -hmm. battle, it's so different than hearing something you know, oh, it's got it's got to be experienced live. It's got to like be it's experienced just, live. I didn't know that until yeah. then. Yeah, I, did, I didn't. I yeah, didn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just, yeah. So I, I've, yeah. I mean, oh, Arvo Park. Good night. Seeing Arvo Park in Carnegie Hall, and then seeing the next day at the Met in 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 um in New York, oh, wow. and getting to meet him and like just like that's insane in of itself like hearing there's like a picture of that right yeah yeah, yeah. have you been getting to meet him yeah so i mean i don't know i've seen a lot of crazy stuff but all that to being said and it's not just because like me fanboying out it's like objectively like seeing baby gene play it's like i mean the man's possessed you know so anyways well I, my, mine is mine is very obscure so Mine is very. Yeah. I, I've seen a ton. I've seen seen a ton of live shows, Brad. but and this this is this is what surprised me the 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 most is, and I don't know if they still do their thing or not. But there is a, I don't even know what I would call it because it's not it's not it's like a, I think it's a little bit of a permanent band, but it's called Santa Fe and the Fat City Horns. But here's the thing: this is Vegas, right? And basically what it is, it's like a Tuesday night it used to be at the Palms in this little showroom that the Palms has at the front. There the seats, maybe, I don't know, a, a hundred people maximum. They're on Spotify. But it's, okay. But yeah. forget about, forget about that. Forget about whatever's re recorded, right? That's the, that's the permanent band. But basically what it was, was it was where all of the musicians from all of the Vegas shows would go to hang out and then come up on stage and jam. Oh, wow. So like all the musicians from Cirque du Soleil, from like, uh, you know, all the shows from the David Copperfield show, from whatever was in town, all of the, all those people, all of the cover bands, all these like the best musicians out of them, they all knew each other. And so they would just like show up and then they'd start, you know, so from the stage, it's always a different band. And then they'll start shouting out, oh, you know who's here? So-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. And sometimes it'd be some of the big people. They'd be like, you want to come up and just like go? And they're like, okay. And it's like the dude would just step off the keyboard. And then just, some, just somebody else would just go and just and immediately kill it. 
Like they would just be like, what are we doing? What are we? Okay, just go, just go. And then boom, just start to end it with just See, that's sick. That gets my blood going. That's so awesome because if like jamming it. Bro. It, it, man. And incredible. Like, because the thing is that like Cirque du Soleil. Now people don't know those Cirque du Soleil shows have live musicians. Mm. The musicians that are in Cirque du Soleil are as good of caliber musicians as the acrobats are as acrobats, <laughs> right? Like that's the singers, all of that. So it would be like those, that was who was not only, so you're in the audience with them because nobody else even knows the show is happening, right? Right. It was like a friend who dragged me to it one night and was like, yo, you have no idea this, like the Tuesday night, the Palms is empty. And it's just in this little, side thing every tuesday is incredible incredible wow. and I, I i maybe half dozen times i went every single time it was different different people every single time it was absolutely sick everybody's on their feet by the end and and mind you there's a hundred people at that wow incredible incredible because they're doing it for them for them for themselves what, what i mean you know what yep. i mean they're they're there for like the musicians are there for each other like just to experience mm -hmm. yeah that's great. Incredible. That's on incredible. YouTube, yeah. for whoever's inclined on YouTube, there's a footage from the studio of the Beastie Boys and they jam out Wonderwall by Oasis. That's dope. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, and like they just like you sit, you see they're like sit there like trying to figure it out. Um, we have six minutes, so we're at two hours. So I'm gonna ask one last question. It's really, really quick. Who is the one guy who is the one artist you'd want to see, but you never ever be able to see? Either they're not cool now and you wouldn't really want to go see them or they're dead or they're broken up. Because mine is... I already, na already named them. David Eugene Edwards. No, I've seen him a bunch of times. So I don't even want to see him again. No, I know, but like... <laughs> but go on and then like Kate Bush. I mean, to see Kate Bush would be... But I'll never be able to see her. Like she played was at like... Does she not play anymore? Is she no, dead? she played like eight years ago, something like five years ago, something like that. Tickets were like fifty thousand oh, dollars. You know, whoa, like, like crazy. Whoa, like, like crazy. Nineteen ninety nine. I've seen everyone. I've seen so so mine. I've seen everyone that I had want. I've I've made an effort to do so. I can't think of one. Nineteen ninety nine Beastie Boys like hello nasty just coming out like there's a show live of them absolutely incredible of them live in glasgow and like absolutely incredible show to be at that show that would be like my absolute and then probably morrissey 20 years ago i wouldn't want to go see morrissey now it'd be sad to see him now but 20 years ago i would absolutely go see him i saw the beastie boys i don't know what year but at one of those big festivals i don't know whether it was coachella or something like that not wasn't impressed but they were much older at that point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 1999 is their, is their peak. Like 1999 to 2001 is their peak. I love them. I love all their albums, but their last two are definitely their weakest. So what are you going to do? I love them, though. I still love those albums. We get old and tired. Yeah, get old and tired. And plus, those dudes, like, and to be fair, this is the last thing I'll say. They aged so gracefully. Because, like, they yeah, did they not did. try and remain young. In fact, if you look at um, what's the video with Nas, where they're just, it's the last video they recorded, too many rappers and not enough MCs. But with Nas, uh, 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 MCA is, like, straight up wearing, like, dad sunglasses mm -hmm. with, like, a polo. And, like, none of them look remotely cool. Like, they aged mm -hmm. so gracefully. They're like, yeah, we're still going to rap. We're still going to do exactly what we want to do. But we know we're old. We're not like Blink-182 or we're dyeing our hair and wearing flat brim hats and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're done. We're old. We but get that's it. the charm, though. I find that incredibly, like, that's really, I that like it. Ten times out of ten. Like, yeah. I was yeah, so yeah. relieved when I was first loving on Beastie Boys when I was like, okay, they aged gracefully. And like, you know, I, I think if they had kept going, they would have been really good. I'm not going to fanboy about another band for the ending of the show again. <laughs> so, um, uh, so last week I figured out my ending, which okay. I got a little bit flustered because I realized I've been talking about me without you for too long. And I said, thank you for having a good night. And that's what I'm going to start saying at the end of every podcast. I love it. So thank you for having a good night, everyone. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.